Welcome to Creepscape's Hot Takes. We're doing this segment so that I can throw some quick thoughts at you about films that I've watched and give you effectively more recommendations than I would have otherwise. My reviews take me ages to make and I don't end up actually reviewing that many films that come out. So I thought that I'd give you these little quick snippets, these quick little reviews, so that you can go away and watch some of the either best horror films or my recommendations for the most laughable ones. So this is definitely one of those. It's a doozy of a film that I found called Grace. It was a feature film shot in 17 days and my word, was it an absolute fucking treat. Now hooks are things at the beginning of films or stories that get the audience engaged and interested in the plot. Guess what the hook with this film was? Um, it was a woman having unenthused sex and then assuming some position that apparently makes semen go into you better to, imp you know, to improve your likelihood of pregnancy. Now what they did to create the sense that this woman was pregnant or wanted to get pregnant was, um, was have her assume the fetal position See, I can think of a thousand, a thousand other ways that they could have done this, all more effective, and all far less boring. I mean, that's not the hook of a movie. Like, I don't... Maybe maybe it's the hook of a, a birthing documentary. Oh, that's how you get... That's how you get pregnant. Oh, that's interesting. No. Not a fucking horror movie. That's not a hook. I'm sorry. So just a warning, there's a lot of uh, vegan propaganda in this film. They have some sort of soy milk called soy moo that they throw into every shot. There's a strange TV show that she always has terribly edited into the TV showing some vegan channel or something playing where kid where kids pigs are getting cut up and it's just confusing. I, I honestly at the end of this movie I don't know whether it was pro-vegan or anti-vegan even though they had this like soy milk product placement for like half an hour. It was like the dominant thing in the frame. It... So aside from this being really strangely shot, you know, overexposed and then underexposed, uh, you know, really grainy footage for half the film, and then like an attempt to grade it so that it would wash the grain out of it, but it just washed everything out and it looked grey. You know, the premise at the heart of the film was almost just as cooked as it was visually. This film is about how a baby died in a woman's womb in a car crash that she was in that killed her husband. And it's about how the baby was dead inside her womb and was born dead, I think, and then miraculously came back to life. But it was hungry for blood. It, well, it did make for an entertaining bad film, so... I'm okay with it. But it did have some of the most awkward shots, just cringy awkward shots of all time. Like, so she's in this birthing pool because she wanted to carry the baby to term, even though it was dead. And it comes out and it's like a fake dead child. And she's like having like a moment with it, but like I'm not attached to her or the baby as characters because they were written so poorly. So she's having this tender moment that's meant to be emotional and it's just, you know, her holding this fake plastic fetus and it was just, it was just mostly uncomfortable. You know, not, not in the way that films go for on purpose, that they try to make you feel uncomfortable and you're like, oh, you did that well. No, this was just a byproduct of obviously fake baby, low budget fake baby, uh, dead in a birthing pool for like 20 minutes, so... Yeah, there was that. And then eventually it comes alive. And it, it, of course it still looked like a disgusting fake grey baby that was made in a factory. But then there were some sound effects that were too loud um, of it crying. And now, now it's alive. So that's what happened. The baby was born dead and it's been dead in the womb for three weeks. And now it's alive. And so it's hungry. Uh, and so every time this woman breastfeeds it, the baby wants the blood, like, so it'll bite her. And I don't know how it bit her without any teeth, but it bit her and she would bleed and then the baby would drink the blood. So that's kind of what we're dealing with in general for this film. 
so to add to the tally of like really awkward, awful shots, there's some of the baby breastfeeding and like having blood on its face, like all these weird close ups of like this fake baby. And because I guess the, the stress of the movie, the overall anxiety was induced by a baby crying, right? So instead of some sort of like cleverly crafted way of, of making people anxious in your horror film, and, and uh, you know, I think we should all accept bit crying babies um, as a part of society, but ultimately, you know, it's a, it's not a, it's a kind of annoying sound, and you, you basically induce all your anxiety in the whole film with this baby crying hysterically because it's always hungry because it's some sort of zombie baby. But of course you have uh, laws about working with children, and when you work with babies especially, which makes this film extra ambitious, uh, all the working with children's checks you need, you know, working with babies is no, is no easy feat. Because you're working with a baby, you have a baby that you can't make look disgusting with makeup. Uh, so you have this disgusting zombie looking baby, uh, doll, that's clearly a doll, plastic shitty doll. And then for the two hours that you could hire a baby for in your budget, uh, you have this really cute, like adorable baby who's clearly a baby model for some like, you know, whatever baby product ads because it's just like the cutest baby ever. Uh, and you cut in between footage of that and then close ups of like a fake baby doll, like, you know, lifelessly sucking on a nipple with blood on it. And it was, it's just, it was just bad. It was just, I'm sorry, it was just bad. I, I know that you were trying to make a film that, that was good and, and you didn't. So I think even the filmmakers realized that having a baby crying, inducing anxiety in their audience isn't like, doesn't make a good film. So what they did was um, they stopped, I mean, it cried less throughout the film. And what they did when they needed to communicate that the baby was hungry still they got it to, um, like, touch her chest, and it was really weird, and, like, like, I mean, there's some footage there, obviously, like, really weird, as you can see. Fake baby hand, like, trying to say, I need, I want blood. <sighs> Why? This is such an ambitious film, and in, in all the wrong ways. This is just... Why? Why, mate? I don't know. You know, I need to address you by name so that you know that I'm, um, that I'm serious. Grace Film. Okay. Okay, uh, Paul. Paul Solid. Mate, why? I've seen some of your interviews. You seem like a kind of, like, charming, smart guy. I don't. I don't know why you did this. This didn't need to happen. Truly, mate. This woman's mother wants the baby taken off her and she goes to get a doctor involved to go visit her house and take the baby away from her. They organize it all. And so when they come to the end of the meeting, the mother tries to strike a deal with this guy and she asks him what he wants and the guy, there's just a close-up of the fucking dude swilling milk and then drinking it. And it's the creepiest thing fucking ever. And then when he goes around to her house, he tries to steal her breast milk. Like, extort it out of her and steal it. And then he gets killed, which is fun. But like, what? And all the while the grandmother, uh, the mother of the protagonist is trying to prepare for having this baby that she really wants and is setting up cots and all this stuff there's this scene where she gets her husband to like suck on her breasts to stimulate milk being developed like, in them I guess so she can nurse the baby the way that they communicated that the baby wanted blood wasn't clear either so it's just as far as we know or as far as I knew she the baby is biting the mother's nipple and it's bleeding but she's still ultimately drinking the, the milk um, and 
it's just has side effects of making her mum bleed. And then uh, all of a sudden, her mum goes to the fucking grocery store, again, with more vegan propaganda, something about like grass-fed beef, and she goes to the supermarket and buys them out of stock uh, of all this beef, all this big meat cuts of meat. And then she drains the blood into a baby bottle and then feeds her baby it. And we go from like, oh, that's weird. The mum is, you know, like, I didn't think the baby would have teeth enough to like make the mum bleed to like, why is she feeding this fucking baby cow's blood? Like it just, the connection wasn't made there in my mind. And I was just like, really, this is the next thing? This is what you're going for now? So there was all these continuity errors. The baby falls asleep on one breast, wakes up on the other. There's all these fly traps that she puts up everywhere because the baby like stinks, I think. Like sometimes it didn't and sometimes it did. And there were like fly traps in the room and then there wasn't. And then there was fly traps again. And like the baby went from being like a disgusting little gray vampire fake thing to a cute, really adorable baby, which was hilarious. Like, did you not... Did you watch it back and really think that was like, that was congruent? Paul, what was his name? Paul, I think. Also, all the flies that were meant to be around there, she was swatting them and they were exploding with blood. Does that mean like they were vampire flies and they were drinking the baby's blood or... Cause that's like flies don't drink blood. Don't know what that was. Like, why would you pay someone to do an animation of a fly dying to add all this blood exploding out of it? More blood than could have possibly fit in the fly. Like, you paid someone to make the fly explode with blood when you didn't have to because it kind of made your movie less believable in doing all that work. So just thought I'd let you know that. Paul. They do the exorcist shot where the fly is on the window, except they do it bad. Also, at one point... She's, she becomes a shut-in uh, and doesn't want to leave the house, of course, because if she went to the doctor, they'd take her baby off her or whatever. And she duct tapes her windows. Uh, she, you can see the uh, utter ineffectiveness of, of her duct taping the windowsill there. They get some pears, clearly just from the shop, and then they just poke their thumbs into them to make them look like they're like rotting and bruised, but clearly someone's just punch their finger through it. Oh, it's so funny. There's a dead mouse that was put in the, the bin that ends up in the baby's bed, implying that the baby got it out of the bin, but it couldn't have, and it was under, like, miles of rubbish. So also it set up this, like, subplot of, like, oh, shit, the baby's about to start moving around. It's Maybe it gets extra strength from being, um, you know, a dead, undead baby. But no, it didn't. It stayed in bed. There was nothing to imply that it was a pet that took the mouse out of the garbage. And it was under, like, piles of beef anyway, so I didn't understand that either. I'm glad they didn't go down that road, though, because that would have been fucking awful. Um, so, yeah, set that up that the baby was going to move, maybe, and then didn't do anything with it, and it was completely useless and utterly lifeless for the rest of the film. Anyway, so... I recommend everyone go watch Grace for one of the best shit movies I've seen in a while. And yeah, so tell me what you think of this. I know it's a little bit of a sort of easier format for reviews, well for me anyway. But tell me if it works. Hopefully it's short. Um, I can pump these out. I've, so I've seen The Quiet Place and Hereditary in the cinemas and I'm going to review both of those um, ASAP. So peace out.